fun-loving and vivacious Christy Kelly was born and raised in Boonville, Indiana, a hard scrabble coal mining town in the Midwest. Describe Christy to me. Bubbly personality. Uh, definitely wasn't afraid to tell you what she thought. I couldn't have asked for a better daughter. At 27 years old, Christy had just recently divorced and moved back in with her parents, hoping to jumpstart her new single life. She was getting ready to go out with her friends, and of course, I'd always tease her about, you know, well, who are you going to be with? And of course, you know, being 27 year old, she would be like, Dad, really. That question would soon sound ominous on a steamy night in August. After hitting a few bars on Boonville's main drag, Christy and her friends wound up at the local VFW. Bar manager Tommy Mattingly vividly recalls the cute young mom with big blue eyes perched on the bar stool. Anything seemed unusual about that evening. She was here, and there was another girl with her and, and a guy with her, and they were having a good time. After a few drinks, the couple left. Christy lingered past closing time. She was sitting at the bar. Me and my bartender, we, we had kind of had our backs turned to her, turned around, and I mean, she was there one minute, and the next minute, Christy was just gone. They searched the ladies' room, but... She wasn't there, so we just assumed then that she'd come out and went home. But Christy never said goodbye to either you or her friend who was bartending. Never said a word. I never heard one sound. The next morning, Christy's parents drove by the local drugstore where she worked and noticed her car wasn't in the parking lot. But we just assumed at this time, you know, she was probably at lunch. But turns out, Christy oddly never showed up for her job. She did, never just missed work without calling in something. Todd, a Warwick County Sheriff's Department retired jailer, quickly called his former sergeant. I just told him, hey, I think I may have a problem. I think my daughter may be missing. Todd soon learns Christy was partying at the VFW. When he arrives, there's no sign of Christy or her SUV. But in the ladies' room, the janitor finds what could be an important clue. Christy's abandoned cell phone. I think that's when my heart really dropped. For her cell phone to be left behind, may as well have been surgically attached. <laughs> the gnawing in the pit of Todd's stomach quickly turned to full-blown panic. He frantically combed the back roads of town in search of his daughter. We were going to find her. No, had to. And within a day or two, a massive multi-agency search descends on the close-knit town to help. We had aircraft, had drones, people on horseback, ATVs. There was hundreds, if not thousands, looking. We worked around the clock to find her. You know, it was our number one concern. With no trace of Christy, police order polygraph tests for the last known people to see her alive, including Tommy, the bar manager. It says here that the subject, this would be you, uh, was not being truthful regarding the relevant questions. It's either two things. It's either whoever give me that polygraph test don't know how to operate that machine or your machine's broke because I didn't tell you anything but the truth. Six more people, including Christie's ex, were given lie detector tests. Shockingly, three out of the seven failed. Meanwhile, the feverish search for the young mother continued. As time went on, you know, it, uh, you kind of come to the realization the odds of finding her alive, or they diminish. But either way, we were going to find her. But where? When the land hunt yields nothing, the search moves below the water's surface. Investigators scour a lake off of a rural county road, and 32 heart-wrenching days after Christy went missing, a grim discovery. Christy's SUV is pulled from the murky green water. Tragically, Christy is inside. Take me to the moment when your daughter's SUV was found. The Sheriff Cruz and Lieutenant Brian Flowers showed up at the house, said they believed they might have found the vehicle. What was your reaction? So you're glad that you finally found her. But flip side of that, I'm sorry. I don't mean to get emotional, but you also realize you lost your daughter. And less than 24 hours later, more heartbreak. The coroner determines the cause of death as an accidental drowning. How quickly did investigators rule Christie's death an accident? <laughs> Pretty quick. 
the night she was found, and they did an autopsy early the next morning, and it was ruled an accidental drowning. That was the end of it. In accidental drowning, Todd and his wife were not only shocked, they were downright suspicious. What put your antennas up? Gosh, going back to that cell phone being left behind, that was a big red flag. Todd says the circumstances surrounding Christie's death are as murky as the water where she was found. Desperate for answers, Christie's parents asked Sheriff Brett Cruz to open the case file so they could review the investigative findings. Strangely, their request was denied. The sheriff sealed the record and refused to give a reason why. Have they ever given you an explanation? We're withholding this because of, and then they tell you. He told me then that, Todd, you know, sometimes when in your youth, you, you do things that you don't want your parents to know. But first. you're the you're the parent. I know. If you're saying no, it's okay. I I want all the information. Yeah. But it wasn't given. And Todd wasn't given up. Convinced Christie's death was no accident, he goes on an investigation of his own. Every time the others question, it leads to more questions. The search for Christy Kelly met a tragic end. Her body found in her SUV submerged at the bottom of a lake in Boonville, Indiana. The coroner quickly ruined Christie's death in accidental drowning, and Sheriff Brett Cruz closed the case and sealed the file. Did you ever ask the sheriff or any of the deputies or investigators that question point blank? Why are you not looking into this death further? To be honest, I never really asked him that question. All I know is I wish the case would be reopened and let's try to find some answers as to why it's sealed. Christie's parents always suspected their daughter's death was no accident. I just want to know the truth, what happened to her. I want to know what happened that night. So desperate to know, Todd and his wife took an extraordinary step. Hiring attorney April Edwards to dig for answers possibly hidden in the closed file on their daughter's death. Sheriff Cruz indicated to me that the, it was an accident and it was closed. That's and it, it's it leaves been flat out, it's an accident. Right. But we're not gonna hand over these records. Yes. The investigator's theory is that Christie had too much to drink, veered off the road and landed in the lake. But Tommy, the bar manager at the VFW, said she didn't seem drunk when he last saw her. The other night, she was walking fine. She was talking fine. You know, she wasn't slurring. Investigators do say their theory is Christy was drunk <laughs> and she went off the road into yeah. the lake and drowned. Do you buy that? No. Why not? In talking with the pathologist, he explained to me how as the body decomposes, it produces ethanol. Ethanol reads as alcohol in your toxicology. Her toxicology was only a 0.112, so she had been probably around a 0.05, and that would be nowhere near incapacitated. Could the answers possibly be hidden in security camera footage now sealed in the closed file that captured what appeared to be Christy as she left the bar? She leave the VFW and make a right, which would be indicative of her coming toward her house. But yet she's found four miles south of town. The sheriff believes Christy was speeding southbound on Mount Gilead Road. They say she blew past a stop sign and careened into the lake. But Todd says when he searched the area, he made a chilling discovery. Todd, what is significant about this location? Uh, this is the location where we found uh, parts of Christie's vehicle. It was the passenger side fender well. That it was later determined that's what it came from. Todd says the fender was from Christie's own car, far from where she was found dead. More than a mile away yes. from the alleged crash site. Yes. When they pulled it from the lake, was a lot more damage than should have just been caused by water. This is what led us to look to try to figure out, you know, what happened. And another disturbing find when Christy was recovered from the lake. Her body had no bruises or injuries that would be expected in a violent car crash. I mean, did she have any wounds on her? Nothing. Nothing to indicate any type of uh, bleeding, contusions, scratches, cuts, not a broken fingernail. Her body is pristine. Um, so to me, that doesn't make sense. 
And April Edwards says investigators were well aware of another bizarre detail. When they pulled the SUV from the water, the gear shift was in park and her keys were in her pocket. Why do you take the keys out and put them in your pocket? Why do you, do, you know, why do you put the car in park? That, to me, is, is extremely odd. Because um, I would think that most people's instant reaction would be, hey, yike, I better get out of here. Even more shocking, April says her body was found in the back seat. How does law enforcement uh, theorize that she ended up there? The information that was made available to me indicates that she could have either crawled there or that she could have floated there. I'm not sure I buy into the floating theory because there was a big car seat. She had children. Which begs the second question. Could Christy have been the victim of foul play? There's a possibility that needs to be investigated that this was all staged to look like an accident. In my mind, it's possible that somebody abducted her and kept her for a couple of days or a week and until they realized that the heat was getting tight and they had to dispose of the car and the body. If Christy was abducted, who would want to take her? Or was it a random attack by someone much closer to home? One of Christie's exes, the father, has been with the department for 30 years. April tells us that one of Christie's exes has connections to the sheriff's department investigating the case. If there was a cover-up or someone's being protected, that's where it would happen. I think that most people would, lead, would, would reach that conclusion. This particular person made a misleading statement to the uh, people investigating her disappearance. Uh, he'd indicated that she had disappeared before one time for four days and one time for two days, when in fact, that's patently false. The FBI did help the family get a hold of the data in Christie's cell, even generating a 6,000 page transcript of her texts. And what was discovered in her digital footprint was chilling. Her text messages had reflected that uh, an ex had made some threats toward her within the week before she disappeared. So far, the family hasn't been able to connect the dots on the text exchange. Were they just idle threats or something far more sinister? So these texts of a uh, sexual nature? There was one shortly before her disappearance that uh, basically you just need to disappear. But I really don't want to go into great detail at this time on that. Somebody it's saying been... to Christy that she yeah. needs to disappear? Pretty much, yes. That same ex was given the polygraph test. His results came back inconclusive, but there was never any follow-up interview. I think that there are motives out there if the police would look a little further. But there are other exes in the picture. One of them admitted to keeping track of Christie's whereabouts. And Christie's texts reveal she was texting another guy the night she disappeared. With so many questions, we think it's high time to pay a visit to the sheriff. We are curious too why the sheriff just won't hand over the case file to Christie's parents. We've tried to reach out to him. He won't return any of our phone calls, any of our emails. So now we're here outside his office to see if he'll talk to us. My name is Jason Matera. I'm with the television show Crime Watch Daily, and we are doing a story surrounding the controversy of Christy Kelly's death, and we'd like to get comment from the sheriff. Is he available? He's not available. Is he here today? He's not available. Any reason why he's avoiding? No, I have no idea. For now, April is working to open the sealed file legally with the help from a forensic pathologist to subpoena the sheriff's department. And at this point, after three harrowing years with no answers, Todd can only hope that one day he will know the truth about what happened to Christy. Where do you go from here? Let's find out what happened, period. I owe it to my daughter, and that's kind of my stance on it. And my grandkids someday are going to want to know what really happened. I want them to have those answers.